So this is the talk that has generated the most pre-festival coverage in the media. And one of my own thoughts about this subject is that the media like to discuss it more than the general public do, but perhaps we'll discover the truth of that this afternoon. Vogue is often, of course, in the eye of the particular storm. The title, Too Fat, Too Thin, Can We Ever Be Content, is deliberate. This isn't meant to center on whether models are too thin, but on our own dissatisfaction with our bodies. To discuss it, I'm pleased to have a lively and opinionated group of individuals on stage. Patsy Kensett has known what it's like to be in the spotlight since the age of four, when she made the now famous appearance in a bird's eye peas advert. She's experienced intense media scrutiny over her life and her appearance ever since then, and is now a very hardworking ambassador for Weight Watchers. Over there <laughs> is Daisy. Aside from having one of the country's most delectable figures, Daisy has the best manners in London. <laughs> She's been modeling for years, and her list of clients include Agent Provocateur, Chanel, Whistles, Burberry, and Karen Millen. Daisy is one of the most out and about photographed girls of the moment, and so she also knows what it's like to have her every appearance scrutinized and recorded. Bravely entering the furore is Britain's most successful male model, David Gandhi. <laughs> David features in countless campaigns, but I wonder how many of you know that he has many other strings to his bow. For instance, he's ambassador for Battersea Dogs and Cats Home and has launched his own very successful charity foundation, Blue Steel Appeal, sounds like an aftershave, <laughs> for Comic Relief's Red Nose Day. And Krista D'Souza at the end is one of Vogue's contributing editors. And alongside being a really terrific interviewer, she's brought her own questioning style to bear on herself, often writing about her own issues, about how she feels about her body. To, to share the discussion is Vogue's editor-at-large, Fiona Golfer, who will be chatting with the panel, and then we'll take questions from you all at the end. Thanks, Over to you, Fee. Hello, everybody, and thank you all for coming. It's, um, it's great that you're here. So I'm going to start. Um, Daisy, I'm going to ask you, has anyone ever said that you were too fat or yeah, too thin? Uh, usually the too fat one. Um, of course, on countless jobs, family also being very naughty sometimes to be concerned of what I'm doing um, and to make sure that I stay successful. But um, I've been sent home from a show for being too big. And actually, at that point, I was... 17 um, in Milan and um, I was thin then and um, I was actually quite happy because I got to go to my friend's gig that night but <laughs> um, but it, it you know it's hard being young and having that on you um, because you know you just want to feel good about yourself so you can be bright and happy and and that it, it comes in a lot and you survived it yeah I survived it I'm all right now there you are Live Patsy, to tell the what tale. about you did you have you Ever been told that you were too fat? Oh, too thin boy, and... yes. I mean, I, I was from up until the age of 31, I was criticised very heavily for being too thin. Um, and uh, it, that which was kind of just as unpleasant. And then I gained um, an awful lot of weight. I went from being sort of eight stone I, and could eat what I wanted. Uh, um, I went up to 11 and a half stone which may, might, may not sound like a great deal, but I'm small and, it's, and it, I've been in this body that was this, you know, this one size my whole life. And I, I felt like I just didn't know this person or if I looked in a mirror, I avoided mirrors for years. But there was, I mean, my name rhymes with a lot of things. So it was, the media had a wonderful time, Fatsy Patsy, Patsy scoffs it. I mean, it was just, you know, endless. And it was, and the thing is, I knew, I knew I was, I didn't need to be told. I, I knew it was, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I changed dramatically. And, and, um, and then I found Weight Watchers and that was, that was my road back to, back to being a, a normal, healthy, happy woman. Um, Krista, what about you? 
Do you get do you get the too fat, too thin? Um, I thin? have never been told that I was fat, but I've certainly been told that I was heavy by the person who, when I was young, was the most important person to me in my life, who was my father. Right. And I think that kind of sort of set it in stone. Um, and it's sort of been an issue, sort of been an issue ever since. Um, so, yes, and then I've done various things, sort of going up and down. Pregnancy was really hard. <laughs> um, funny enough, I think that now I'm in my 50s, I found a modicum of peace and serenity, but I'm still working at it. And David, did you just come out looking like a god? Or uh, <laughs> did you have to work at it? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> apparently the first thing the nurse said to my mum when I popped out was look at the size of those legs and look at the size of that bum <laughs> so um, I was probably told I was big when I was born um, I didn't get told I'm fat uh, but um, I, I mean I've had some very big names send me home from shows you have? Um, yeah absolutely because I didn't fit the clothing not because I was too fat because I was too big I don't, I don't fit sample sizes I've never had fit sample size in the fashion industry. On, on Friday I was at a shoot and we went through three racks of clothing and I fitted you know, probably five outfits and that's about it. The last advertising we did last week in Paris. Again there were three racks of suits and in the end we had to choose one suit because that's the only one I fitted. Really? Um, but now they can't send me home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Krista, I was wondering, you have a, you know, you are a skinny woman. Many women would consider you to be skinny and um, and that, for them, is, is, is an aim. I, mean, I think a lot of women feel that skinny is something to aim for. You're very self-revelatory in your journalism about your body. Would you say that you are normal? Would you say that you're, you, are now, you are happy in your body and therefore content with the way that you look? I think everyone sort of thinks of themselves as normal in the sense that how come everybody else doesn't think the way that I do? But that's perhaps by pathology. Um, I think to a certain extent I have... Someone once put it as, I have broken eyes. When you look in the mirror, you're not, they're not, they need to be repaired. Um, and I think a number of reasons have contributed to that. I think that some of us are hardwired to be neurotic. And to a certain extent, almost OCD about weight. Like, mm. that's the thing you think about. It's almost like a security blanket. Um, it's something... Women are very physical with, their, with the way they feel about themselves, and it feels like all our problems are written on the body or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, gosh, now I've forgotten what the question is. But <laughs> do you think you found a... Do you think you are sort of, you know, you, do you think your ideal is... My you ideal... You are at your ideal. Oh, do you gosh. think... Can you ever really be happy? Are you there? Uh, no, I think that... No, but I, I think that's also about society never being quite satisfied enough and I think that's not just about weight I think it's about all sorts of things that we can always be better if we just have the money and the wherewithal we can be better um, and I think that weight is very much part of that so in answer to your question no but I hope so I mean you know I'm optimistic I mean I, I think a lot of us do aspire to be you know I'm, I'm always thinking you know, if I was thinner I'd be this or if I was thinner I'd be that David is skinny sexy <laughs> <Careful>. <laughs> <laughs> I might get this question. Uh, <laughs> I wonder. It's, you know, what does it say? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. Yeah. And you behold it. a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think of you as a, as a good red blooded man. I wonder, you know, when you look at a girl, do you think, mm, you know, I like, I, I wonder, you know, we're giving so is, many me, images me, it's, to it's look funny, at. Me, me and Daisy, we were just having a chat backstage and we were sort of saying, we're having a bit of a heart to heart relationship kind of uh, Not chat. A and, slur. Uh, you know, I kind of said, it's, it's fine, you know, you, you can, someone can be beautiful. I do work with the most beautiful women in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very, very, very fortunate. Um, but, you know, it's, it's so much more than that. And then, you know, we'll come to and really, that's the first thing, of course, most people are attracted to, they're a certain type of person. And then it's, it's so much more, and it, it really, once you strip everything away, it's if, do they make you laugh? How is their personality? Do you get on with them? Mm -hmm. And I can work with the most beautiful women in the world. If I can't have a laugh with her on a shoot, I can't sort of you know, so connect with her, then there's also, you know, she just becomes, you don't see the beauty anymore. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so it's, everyone's different. So, 
What is it? Is it a healthy diet or a fad diet? What, what, when are we ever going to get there? What's the, what's the secret of getting to where we want to be? What do you think, Patsy? Well, I think that we, we're a society now that we, we get everything immediately. You know, we have the, you know, when I was growing up, you, uh, if you wanted something, we had to save up for it. So now, you know, you have your credit card, you go on the internet, it arrives the next day. Normally it's broken, whatever comes. And, um, but... I think we apply that to so many areas of our life, our homes, relationships, and with, with our weight and dieting. And the only way to do it properly is to do it gradually, to not do... Dieting shouldn't be de deprivation. Mm -hmm. Food is a great... I mean, Daisy, you said this yeah. the other day. It's a wonderful thing to make a meal, sit down with your family and, and eat and not be there with a glass of green something I, or I'm only <laughs> eating purple things this week because it's going to get rid of cellulite it's madness so that for me it's you, you know do it you, everyone can can do it but you just it's just you know it take, takes time there's no quick fix I think I think it's a, I think it's one is education it's yeah and it's a lifestyle mm. I don't actually don't I don't like the word diet you know, because the word, I don't like the word diet I think it's uh, it's a fad and your body will always revert back to very, very quickly the way it was. Mm, exactly. um, but it's a, it's a matter of educating people. I think a lot of people around the world, you know, obviously we're having an academic you know, of, of obese people. People are getting you know, sort of bigger around the world. UK is, I think, the, you know, the most obese nation in Europe now. Yeah. And it's a matter of education um, about nutrition. And yet when we turn our televisions on, you know, we know things that we know, diets sell newspapers. And yet you turn on the television and you see, you know, the great British bake-off, followed by Nigella putting her finger in something, followed by a programme about... <laughs> a programme about, you know, how to lose weight and get a gastric band while you're at it. I mean, the messages are very mixed. And I wonder how, Daisy, how, how you feel that we can kind of navigate our way through all of those different messages. I think it's about the energy that you give to food as well. I think that the idea that eating something and feeling awful about it is a, a form of self-hate, definitely. And the idea that you're, you know, if you stop yourself from having any of the food pleasures, so cakes or chocolate, whatever it is, whatever your vice is in, in the food world, but I think if you stop yourself completely, then you'll be kind of miserable because you won't enjoy, you know, your Sundays with all of your friends and everyone else gets to eat cupcakes and you're just the lonely one There's with the, the green juice. With okay. your green juice, exactly. <laughs> um, and I found for me that the best thing that I can do is, you know, I do love eating food that makes my body feel good and, and to have kind of lots of vegetables and salads as well as balancing it with, you know, some of the naughty stuff, but never kind of completely cutting it all out. Otherwise, you just crave that and that's all you think about. And, God, that must be... That's so boring to constantly be watching yourself and watch what you do and actually I think it's really important to go, no, I'm going to enjoy this and kind of have a girly, girly night in and eat loads of cake and watch loads of films and, and love that part of me, but yeah. then make sure that, you know, I'll, I'll go and go to the gym and do some Pilates and... Yeah, that's exactly. kind of it's, it's in moderation. Right? Mm, yeah. Completely. Being everything in moderation and if you do want to go eat you know, <laughs> biscuits, cakes, whatever, there are healthy alternatives. That's, learn, you know, that's, that's nutrition. Mm. Is it's learning about what is good, what, you know, what sugars do, what carbs do, mm. uh, saturated fats. Not all fats yeah. are bad, but your body needs fats. But saturated fats are bad. That's right. So that's the thing to it's stay away from carbohydrates, soup. sugar mm. returning into carbohydrate. People think something doesn't contain fat, but it contains sugar. It's educating yourself. It's like, I don't eat in the morning. Probably the worst thing you could ever do. If you eat in the morning, it starts your metabolism going. Mm. And straight away you're burning, you're burning, you're burning, straight away you're burning calories. But you're constantly being pushed food, which is what, you know, we said about being on TV mm. and this and that. And if I, you know, I'll get off the tube and go and buy a bottle of water in the news agents and this lovely gentleman in there wants to give me this one, this bar of <laughs> chocolate, chocolate family size. <laughs> Please, you know, one pound, I've been saying no for months and we just tried to give it to me the other day because, and, and it's, it's very difficult when you're having all that thrown at you, I think, and you're constantly... <laughs> Uh, it's 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 everywhere. And here you are at the moment. You know you're the you're the ambassador for Weight Watchers, and you look fantastic. I think you look absolutely fantastic. And um, do you kind of do you stick to it? Do you fall off the wagon? Do you find yourself? And then if you do fall off the wagon, mm. which I happen to know you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you beat yourself up about that? No, because with, without you know being hammering at home with Weight Watchers, you get one day a week where you can have. Mm. 
like you have the 49 points or whatever when you're on and you have that piece it's like Daisy said no one can 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 live their life and and be you know just it, we all get the days when we want chocolate we want cake we want this and that what's your poison Patsy oh everything I, I <laughs> love food I'm greedy I I'm, know I'm greedy <laughs> I love to I eat know. I think food's wonderful yeah food's so much fun to Isn't share it? with people and you know if you take that away then you suddenly what have you, you know the loner in the corner with, with nothing. got David though <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think exercise is a big thing to do yeah, with it because yeah. that makes you happy from the inside as well. You know, you release endorphins and then you don't feel so bad about that Sunday, the Sunday before where you've eaten everything in sight just for fun. I was thinking that none of you have, um, I have a daughter, but actually none of you have That's daughters. Important. I think I'm and, so um, glad I don't. And I, you're so Not glad yet. you don't because yeah. I, I grew up, you know, I was a daughter of a mother who was very concerned with these kind of things and I wonder... Do you think you would think differently, Krista, if you had a girl about the messages maybe that you, about the way that you are or the disciplines that you have oh, if I'm you sure. were bringing up a teenage daughter? Yeah, I mean, I don't know because I've never had one, but oh my God, yes. And I think that women do have a harder time. I really, really do. Um, because, you know, men do the do Historically, men do the doing. We are looked at and that's the way it is. And I think nothing will ever change until men can get pregnant, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Any minute now. <laughs> having said that, I mean, having said that, uh, if I had a daughter, you know, I'd get out of my way not to make it a topic. I have two boys, one of whom actually is incredibly greedy and, like his mother, has a bit of a problem with sugar. And I can see it. I can see it in him and I can see his eyes lighting up when chocolate's around. <laughs> and the way that I deal with it is I try not to make a big deal of it because I know that my father made a huge deal of it. When you get a situation of a child eating chocolate in the loo, um, then you Which know, is what so you nobody did. will see them, then I think you have a problem. Yeah. I mean, Daisy, you grew up in a very glamorous household. I know you're... <laughs> Your mum as well, and I mean, you've known Patsy since you yes. were little, so your yeah. house was full of kind of famous, beautiful, beautiful very, people. very kind of mm. body image concern, image concerned people. That must have had a great impact on you. When, what age do you remember being when you first started kind of considering what you when I started like to get bits? boobs and yeah. kind of and, and also, you know, I, I, as a teenager, I wasn't thin. I kind of, you know, I get, I think it's especially with tall people that you know you grow out first and then you shoot up and. I had curves. I mean, I was a dancer, and I loved doing that, and that's what kept me sort of thin. But I definitely had a, a decent amount of puppy fat. And, of course, Mum having all of her friends over all the time and all of them being so slim and beautiful. Um, I remember, actually, Kate Moss came in, and I was trying to get dressed into... and kind of had my boobs out in a really little skirt. She was like, you know what, darling, you could just dress a bit more demure for your, <laughs> for your shape and um, put, got me to put on jeans, and I actually did look a whole lot better. Um, but um, I think that it, it, from about 12, I started to notice my body. And, and, you know, going through puberty is very hard, putting on puppy fat and being so aware of it. Um, but um, I was, I was a, always a very true believer in kind of, you know, self-loving from the inside, and then hopefully it will it'll bring the message out, to, out on the outside. Was that a message you got from your mum? Yeah. She taught yeah. you to be... She to taught me to, to... Yeah, exactly, because you have to look after you from the inside out stay grounded and you know it was that thing of when I went off modeling and I started doing well she'd turn around and go yeah we you know you're selling clothes you're not curing cancer so sit back down <laughs> like okay I'm not gonna you know talk myself up anymore okay um and that that was good and no, Patsy, you were, a, you know you were a, a wee babe when it started for you was that something again that came from your mum I mean a lot of the therapists and psychologists say you know it all starts at home with the parents was your mother very or your father for that matter very interested in how you looked is that where it came no well, my dad was in prison okay. most of my life <laughs> so um but my mom my mom had, uh, had had cancer and was terminally ill and I from and she managed to fight the illness for a long time but she died when I was 23 and um but I so I didn't have anyone I mean aside from the loss of her to no relatives to look at what happens to my family's body. And then I look back at pictures of my mum at the age when I, I got very big, and she'd done the same thing. She was very small when she, when she passed away. But um, I, I never felt any pressure from work. I was never any, any pressure from home until the last job that I did in America. I remember getting off the plane, and, and the producer was there to meet me, and their faces fell. They were like... <laughs> 
what I mean, because this isn't the girl that we hired. What? <laughs> um, and I, I, it was it was awful. It was absolutely awful. And we're so hard on ourselves, and and we're so you know critical, and 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 it's just you know like you got you have to love yourself and be confident. And it's easy to say. But if you're comfortable and confident, I think it's, you know, that's all that life is harmonious then. I think that women, I mean, you know, I'm, I find that quite often I sit down with women, sometimes women I've met for two minutes, and before you can say, Dot, we're talking about our weight Ooh. and other things of um, <laughs> personal relevance. <laughs> Dave, does that happen between blokes? Does that happen with you and your, you know, your lad friends? Do you sit down and go, well, I'm feeling porky today. I really, <laughs> I'm really not happy about my thighs or... You know, uh, have you thought no, about liposuction? No, no, or? No, 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 women, there's much more pressure on women than these guys. I mean, I was with sort of two old friends the other day and uh, we haven't seen each other for a while. And I said, oh, God, where, where have you been? I haven't seen you for ages. And the other friend said, well, by lucky you've been down the cake shop. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a joke, you know, yeah. we all laugh, we'll burst out yeah. laughing. And you could probably never say that in a group of girls or say that to a girl, you know, to, to, to a woman. It, it, that's the pressure, there isn't that pressure on men. Uh, so no, we don't. We, we don't. Uh, don't we don't sit around talking about our weight. You don't. <laughs> no. The best thing someone said to me was when I when I got big. You know what? The weight really suits mm. you. <laughs> it was like she, it was like a punch in the stomach. Thank you. Thank you. What we were saying before we came in, you know, everybody walks into a room here, and everybody first thing anybody says to each other is, "You look great." But my but you argument, do. Of, but my yeah. yeah. But my argument to that is that you wouldn't walk into a room and say, "Oh, you're so generous today," because they haven't spent any time. With that, so, <laughs> you know, you, you, that's the first thing you see of, of kind of how someone dresses, and that's how they put their personality and to out into the world. We say that to men as well. I think. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I said that you looked great today. You did. Yeah. So who do you think we should be, um, you know, we look at magazines, we know we look at magazines and we look at movies and who do you think, like, you know, Daisy, if you had to pick a role model today in the kind of, in, in, in the oh, film In world, the modern so, world or am I allowed to pick I think past? generally, just to sort of as a body image, healthy, somebody to look up to and aspire oh. to. Well, I mean, for modern day, I think people like Emma Stone and Jennifer Lawrence. I think Jennifer Lawrence is amazing. Absolutely. That kind of, amazing. when she did the interview and they pulled up the picture of her with Sally, like she just went, yeah, zoom in, come on. I go to the gym, I try and eat well. And yeah, of course, I've still got it. I try really hard and, you know, everyone gets it and we should be proud of our bodies and, you know, whatever shape and size. And the fact is, is, you know, as women, sorry, I can't speak for a man because I'm not one, but, um, you know, the, there needs to be more positive. I think in fashion, you know, when we look through fashion magazines, that is selling a fantasy, it's selling a dream, it's a, it's a different Absolutely. thing. It's a completely different thing to when you pick up kind of all of those awful magazines where cellulite's sort of, you know, circled and pointed out yeah. all kind of bad, you know, that's, that's really awful. And that's moving away from kind of, you know, really loving someone from... It's bullying. Yeah, it's, it's completely bullying. And you find that it's easy to not come back. I know you do a lot of red carpet events, all of you, and, you know, and you're covered by the press and that, and you walk down, and do you come home and look and read about what they say about you and let that in any way affect the way you feel? Is it easy not to, The, the only person that shows me pictures is my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and only the good ones. Um, but um, I learnt from about... 17 when there started to be quite a lot of media scrutiny that it was best for me to never read anything and that actually meant that i had a much happier life you can't start your day like that no. i mean i i about probably about 20 years ago and it was actually um elton john said it to me because i was just it, it was every single area of my life it was horrendous and he said you stop buying it you can't start your day like that mm. so I did and I'm bliss blissfully ignorant and, you know <laughs> I watch the news on television but I mean I don't know who's going out with who I don't know who's got cellulite and who hasn't I know <laughs> I've got it but <laughs> that's you know that's that's enough and here we are at a kind of Vogue festival and everybody you know this is it, it, there's a lot about beauty and beautiful people here but Patsy you go all over the country and you talk to real women yeah. I say real women we're all real women but you talk to women all over the country and you yes. were telling me earlier that those women are not size 12 trying to get to a size 10, which is what you find in London very often. You, exactly. 60 miles out, out of London is a completely different... It's a, it's a different mindset. It's a, it's a different body. And, it's, and, and um, there's a... I, I mean, I've, I've found it just wonderful to meet these women. It's given me a lot back because you set these really unattainable goals for yourself and it's and it's very London seeing it I think we put way too much pressure on ourselves and you, like I said once you go out of, the, out of London it's it's completely different completely different 
And who, where do you think they're trying to, to get to? What is it that they're aiming for? I mean, because a, a size so 12 would be, size 12 yeah, would be would, is, is that's, you, you know, that's, that, that would be their goal weight, a, a size, to be a size 12, which is, you know, the, the correct for their BMI and all that stuff. It's a correct, the correct weight to be, possibly. But um, we, you know, I, I I've think, you know, too thin is not attractive. I don't think anyone, I used to think it was, but I don't know. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to open up to the audience now. So if anybody's got any questions, please do let one of the ushers know and I'm going to try and see them. OK, over there. There's a... Hi. Um, I was just wondering, do you think clothing, like retailers, cater to or like reject women's insecurities? Or do they help? Um, just as a general question. Does anyone want to answer that? I think, I, I think they play on our insecurities, um, probably. Um, can I just say one thing? I do have to say this one thing. Clothes do look good on thin people, too. I mean, we have to acknowledge that. I mean, I, I don't think we can say that they don't. But I think that retailers do play on our insecurities. But then you can dress for your shape and, and then kind of accommodate a curvy yes, woman Yes, you as can. Well. And some of the most beautiful women I've ever known, that's... The thin fat thing, mm. that's not the issue. And that's incredibly attractive, someone who really doesn't give a monkey. Mm. It's rare when a woman, woman does, doesn't, but that's so beautiful. Mm. Anybody else? Any? I don't think we've fully answered her question. Oh, oh. <laughs> Do you think the retailers? <laughs> well, I just think that, that, I think that there could be room for, for retailers mm. to cater for curvier women, definitely. Because there aren't, you know, there aren't much, there isn't many high-end designers that will cater for a curvy woman. <laughs> well, you know, I was going to say that, the high-end, it's probably hard, harder. harder. Street, really. But you know, the, the high street, yeah. Sort of slightly, I think it's more sort of, I mean, I don't, for the women, I, I know the guys, but the women, are, there's, they're not, you know, high-fashion models that they're using now. I mean, the Dove commercials, I mean, it's, it's not yeah, retailers, yeah, no. but didn't they have yeah. a whole advertising campaign of... I can tell you that m and definitely do a very nice line yeah. in what they call shape wear. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is that if a, if a kind of 16 plus beautiful woman wants to go out to a ball or whatever, then what, she has to go to, you know, the, whereas we get to go and shop at expensive designers. It doesn't seem that fair to me, but I'm not about to go and start one because I don't really <laughs> know where to begin. <laughs> Over there, there's a... I'm actually a weight loss consultant um, for Hello. a company, Jenny Craig, and um, I have realised that actually a lot of the people don't need to lose weight. They need to actually look at what they dress in and dress for their shape. How long do you think it will be before people realise that that's the right way of going about it and dieting in a sensible way, not quickly, but sort of over for, sort of for the foreseeable future? How long do you think it will take before people realise that that's the way to go? I think Weight Watchers should definitely have a word with Jenny, Jenny Craig. Craig. <laughs> yes, <it's laughs> um, I, I, I don't think like, there, are, there are any shortcuts, and I but I also think there are women now that w when I was sort of tr in my early twenties that that have changed uh, the perception of shape. Um, you know, Jennifer Lopez. Um, mm. I, I know one of the Kardashian girls or whatever. But and then the gorgeous Daisy comes along, and it's just and and Sophie Dull, and I just think that that's just. Fantastic because you can relate. It's being, you know, you can relate to these people. So hopefully we'll, you know, we'll, we keep this broad and open mind and, and, and see, you know, see the beauty in everything. Doesn't have to be, you know, a stick thin person. Absolutely not. And I do think there are a lot of I do clothes too. out there to accommodate curvy women. I, I, I definitely think that. Um, anybody over there at the back? My question's for David. As hard as it is to believe, have you ever felt insecure about the way you look? <laughs> um, God, yes, absolutely. I feel insecure. Uh, there's, a, there's more of a pressure than any time in my life to, uh, with the accolades I've gotten and, and being in the public eye, that you, I don't feel like I can step out of the house now in a pair of tracksuit bottoms and t-shirt and walk down the road. Um, so there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of sort of insecurities. Um, I was actually, like, like Daisy was saying, I, I was quite tall, but I wasn't always so I, I grew out first of all, so I had a lot of puppy fat, so around about 16, 17, when you want to go and start having sex. And 
and dating. That was when God decided that I should be um, on, on the, my larger side. Um, <laughs> and then I grew up, and then I you know, shot up to six foot three, and I was actually quite a quite a sort of went on the skinnier version, but I was, I was always bigger. Um, was there lots bones. of sex then? Uh, <laughs> not, not as much as I would have liked, I have to, I have to admit. Um, poor you. Yeah, just, uh, yes. Poor, poor oh, you. Don't yeah, it was hard time. Um, but of course, you know, you know, I mean, we, we, you know, we married Testino, who I just saw, you know, we, we changed almost that industry, in, in, in the male fashion industry. Um, but now if you look at the guys coming in, and I'm, I'm 33, so I'm getting older, you know, the, 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 the amazing looking guys coming in with the, you know, with the better bodies and um, or, you know, great bodies, you know, they're so, so handsome and a lot younger. So of course there's insecurities. You, you go, you know, I'm going to my agency and I meet these guys and of course I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very competitive and I think, my God, these guys are you ten them. times better than me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> quick kicking in the back room. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in, in, in a quick answer, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, here. Hello. Hello. Um, my friends refer to me as kind of a health freak. I always watch what I eat. So I work out six times a week. And I'm never happy with myself. And I just, my question might not be new, but it really would be interesting, interesting to hear from someone who is, you know, ob obviously always exposed to the public opinion. How do you get yourself to like yourself? Um, wow. Well, it yeah, might not have anything to do with your weight. It's, yeah. it, I mean, I don't mm. know what you guys think. I think that it's about firstly surrounding yourself with some wonderful women who adore you who adore themselves, not in an egotistical way, coming from a, a place of, you know, just serenity, I suppose, of just, you know, being happy in your skin. But, you know, you're a beautiful woman. So it's clearly not about that. I mean, maybe there's something, the broken eyes, the body dysmorphia thing going on. But I think that, you know, it has to start from, you know, appreciating things in your day, of kind of going about, going about things and going, oh, I had a great time cleaning the oven. I had a great time, you know, but, and I had a great time dancing around with my friends. And then slowly but surely you'll try, you'll start noticing different parts of you that you appreciate in yourself. And, and then, and then the beauty will come in and you'll feel that because you don't need to, ch you don't need to work out six times a week. There's yeah. No one should do that. And you need to live your beautiful life. The know? thing is, is what I'm 45 and, and you, you know, you look, I look back and I wouldn't want to be 25. I wouldn't want that body or to be that person. It's, you know, it's a wonderful, uh, you, I think 40s are brilliant. You know, you don't, you care so little about what anything, anyone thinks about you anymore. But I think it's very important to teach, teach, I've got children, to teach them to love themselves. Mm. Cause, um, and to put, you know, pat yourself on the back. We don't tend to do that in right. England very yes. much. We're very self-deprecating. I think it's good to just to, uh, you, know, gi you know, give yourself a good pat on the back. You look fantastic. You look fantastic. Eight ages, eight, eight ages yeah. is a good answer, actually. Yeah. So, you know, I got to 30 and was much more comfortable in my own skin than I have, have been before, before I felt like I was trying to either prove something to myself or to other people or to please other people rather than now I'm so just happy being sort of, sort of me, really. Um, yeah, let's go. Hadley Freeman wrote an article in the Times a couple of weeks ago about um, body image, and it touched on not just women aspiring to um, look like fashion models, but also um, how other types of media, such as lads, mags, and things, make us not want want a body that's almost unrealistic. So people want to be, they want to look like fashion models, but also have the, like, perfect hourglass figure that everybody wants and maybe it's not just about whether it's being too fat or too skinny it's women aspiring for um, a body shape a certain body shape that isn't their natural shape and maybe um, women well I think they do need to learn um, how to dress for themselves not everybody's an hourglass some people are, are athletic people aren't always naturally skinny and I was wondering whether you had any thoughts on that Crystal what do you think I mean I think we live in a culture of dissatisfaction I really do um, and I guess that's what sells products too. Um, and you kind of have to transcend that. And I, listen, I don't have the answer, but like what you guys were saying, I think with age, perhaps subconsciously one's aware that, you know, this isn't, we aren't gonna be around forever. You have to reconcile some things um, when you get to a certain age. And uh, it's not about the weight and it's certainly not about being hungry. I mean, it's really just a semaphore for, 
for this, well, self-hate, actually. And self-love is the most, I mean, they should really, it should be part, sorry, it should be part of the curriculum at school. Um, I don't know how they would do that, but to teach people to genuinely feel sort of altruistic, to love themselves. It's the hardest thing, particularly, as you said, for English people. Exactly. Americans are slightly better, They I are think. better, but it, it can be seen as arrogance, and I don't think it's that at all. I think it can be taught in a very a beautiful, way, quiet, though. exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, and it's the key to everything. It is totally Some of the, the key to everything. fantastic looking uh, uh, people. I, I, I met a girlfriend's husband, and, and she looks like Hilary Swank, this woman. And I met her husband, and I, got, I thought, I can't, this just doesn't make sense. After an hour in his company, it was so funny, so interesting. It, it was like Warren Beatty was standing in front oh. of me. And so it was, it's, you know, we just we were so quick to judge and to say, well, I know, I know what you're like because of what you've got on mm -hmm. or the size you are. And, you know, I've been guilty of that. And it's, and it's, it's um, you know, we have to re educate. Definitely take um, funny over skinny any Absolutely. day. Absolutely, any, any day. Any day. Any other questions? Right at the back. Um, I was just wondering if you think that in the future um, people will still be these mutant girls on the catwalks that will uh, show the clothes because I see quite a big problem if, yeah. if we have to identify ourselves with, with the girls on the model and still be healthy. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think that would be the same in the future? I mean, it's Basically. interesting. I was looking at even like um, kind of talking with all my friends about all of this, about doing this chat today and we were looking at um, photos of Rubens paintings and how back in the day, you know, everyone, you know, bigger women were regarded in a, in a high way. But, you know, I think that it's really important for, yes, firstly, sample sizes to kind of cater to women with healthy, athletic bodies, you know, that do look after themselves that, um, you know, but I also think that it's important for women to not just focus on, on the fantasy and the ideal, but actually what's right for themselves. Um, because, you know, everyone's bodies are different and, and all of them are beautiful in their own way. And it's definitely about eating, eating well because, you know, we all want to be healthy and stay alive for as long as possible. Um, but also, you know, release endorphins and, and so go to the gym or go and go do yoga or Pilates and, and kind of enjoy those parts of it. But I think that, yeah, fashion, fashion does, it goes through phases. I mean, it's Daisy, you do a lot of, you do shows. I do shows. And do you feel that you are uh, that a hippopotamus you stand out next to the other girls? <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, of course. So why do you think they book you? I mean, they might why they they see book your me? Yes. Uh, I hope it's because I have some sort of energy in the clothes. I was talking to Yasmin Lebon about it at the Michael Cause dinner the other night, and we were talking about how, you know, back in the day, you would have to be a model for a couple of years before you were allowed to do the shows because you needed to have that presence, that confidence to walk down the runway and and sell the clothes in because you know the people watching it would then look at you and think oh i can wear that as opposed to just being a blank face a blank canvas of you know a, a, essentially a clothes hanger mm -hmm. yeah. um and i was saying that you know I, I don't see it very often of that that power i went and saw the jean paul gautier show I was very lucky to see the couture show and um it was that kind of blank canvas, blank canvas, blank canvas, and then Erin O'Connor walked down, and it was this power, this aura, this energy, and everyone just went, I want to be in that, hmm. you know? And um, I'm not saying that I'm in any way, in comparison, anywhere near that, but I'd <laughs> hope that some, somehow I was being hired for, for the energy that I bring to the outfit that I wear. But yeah, putting me next to, next to those tiny weeny girls is completely terrifying. <laughs> I think they should have you as their role model. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, Anybody else? Here, there's... I'm seeing... Yes, with the mic, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm randomly pointing. Um, this question's for Patsy more than anyone, I suppose, having, you know, kind of struggled with weight in the past. How helpful do you think it is to kind of, you know, own that pair of size 10 trousers that you, like, that you have a goal, you know? Yeah. And do you think that's kind of self-deprecating or that it's helpful to have a, a healthy goal in mind? Um, I think that... It's, it really is about having a, a healthy goal, and um, I, when I gained the, um, all the weight, you know, because it happened twice, um, and I, I lost it with Weight Watchers, I stopped doing it and put it back on again, and I've lost it again now. But um, I remember I was going to meet my best girlfriend, and I phoned her up, and I said, I can't come meet you for, the, for an early dinner, and she, and she said, why? I said, because none of my clothes fit me. And she said, that's ridiculous, I only saw you last week, and literally nothing fitted me and nothing fitted me for four years um so i got rid of everything stayed in a lot i, st I was eating <laughs> stayed, in, stayed in eating um but 
I don't think there's any harm in having that, you know, the, the, those trousers that, you know, you can get into, but I'm a great one for clearing it out, you know, get, getting, and also as you get old as well, I mean, you know, what I would have worn, you know, five years ago, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be in today, so it's, but, but, you know, just be kind to yourself, you know, food, food mm. shouldn't be the enemy, it really shouldn't. Mm. David, I just, I, I should be opening this up, but I just want to ask you quickly, what's it like for you as a man when you go out on a date with a girl and she, I mean, I know a lot of women who do it, and she talks about her weight and she, <laughs> she does that, you know, how do I look, do I look fat, do I look thin, how do I look in this, does it make you, you know, kind of go cross-eyed yeah. with boredom or do you just sit there being... Do women do that? No. I, <laughs> I've actually got to say, I've, I've never had that. You've never had a woman saying, kind of, oh, I'm feeling... Does my bum look big in this? Really? Not, no, no. Never had it. Ask me out. <laughs> <laughs> See how it goes. Um, anybody else? <laughs> Hi. I had a question about the role and the responsibility of media. So you guys talk about you got to love yourself and be self-conscious. Then David talked about it's all about education. And then we see that the media are trying to counterbalance the dream world of which you're all part mm -hmm. by showing awful pictures of silhouettes. Mm -hmm. So if that's not the answer, but you look at the whole population that is obese, who are reading these things, what is the future role of, of you and probably of media to help educate? Krista? Would, would, you, would you, are you addressing that to anybody or all of us? Anybody in specific or Vogue? Okay, uh, well, Krista. I'm sorry to yeah, maybe, okay. I mean, Krista. Because you write about yes. these things for the magazine, I think. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. I think you sort of hit the nail, really. Um, uh, I think, though, it is a very tall order. And without sounding in any way kind of reductive, but when there is so much food around and it's so available, What's going to be fashionable is choosing the path of most resistance. It's almost as though, this is kind of going off a bit, but it's almost as though weight becomes a kind of moral issue. Mm. You are a lesser person if you can't discipline yourself in the face of all this stuff. And I think, in a way, oh God, it's a really tall order. Um, and I don't know if I have the answer to that. I honestly don't. I think, you know, changing people's perception at that very, very deep, profound level. Um, you know, magazines saying, actually, a size 16 looks just as good, if not better, than a size 8. It's a huge thing. Mm. Um, so anyway, I don't know, sorry. I think that educating them on, on a nutritional level is, is obviously brilliant for everybody but of course there are all of those awful magazines that circle everything and you know oh they've put on loads of weight and oh look that fat's coming out of the top of those trousers and you know but I think it's about you know if, if, if you as the individual make the choice to go no I am going to be do the best for my body to feel good about me and if that is being a size 16 18 then good for you but you know it's about actually taking the reins into your old ha own hands and rather than going to buy all those magazines that will make you feel awful about yourself, there is no way that they can make you feel good. I guess, I, I guess there are some lucky I ones. I think magazine but editors are misogynistic. Um, I mean, you know, I look that, I don't know if any of you read Daily Mail online, but there's that sidebar. Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> such, it's like heroin, you know you should go there. <laughs> but you do, and I, I, I hate this fascination I have with other women's bodies. I really wish I didn't, but there you go. I think that's, um, I'm afraid, all we've got time for. So can I just thank you all so much thank for coming, talking about this. Thank you.